Music defines us. It helps define the, the main character. Finding the right character in one project to become a source of music where they'll dance or sing, music is there for that. Jean-Marc Vallée is making his next movie and they're gonna offer you the role. And I was like, Jean-Marc Vallée wants, to, wants me to be in his movie? I thought, I thought he had good taste. <laughs> Known for essentially zero storyboarding, a preference for natural light, few to no stage marks, and often just a handheld camera, Jean-Marc Vallée approaches scenes more like a documentarian than a director, capturing moments with his camera as they arrive. When we think of capturing moments, living in the moment, or living expressively, it's hard not to think of music and how it affects us. The brain literally lights up the way we associate sounds with movement, attention, memory, thoughts, feelings, everything really. But despite this clear shortcut to an emotional response, Valet doesn't cheapen the viewer's reaction, he actually enhances it. When you watch his films, you'll notice we only hear music when the characters hear music. That is, that is, that is Jean-Marc Valet. And that is his thing, you know? I mean, he wants, he wants, he never wants to manipulate an audience. I've had this conversation with him many times and it's something that I've learned from him and something that I appreciate from him. You know, the way that, the way that he's making movies, at least right now, um, is in this very realistic, naturalistic, almost documentary sort of fashion. He's following the character. He knows what he wants it to be. He doesn't know how to get there yet. So every time he goes in, he's finding it. He puts the actors in the space. They go out and they run through the scenes and they find those moments and they find the language and the character. And then all of a sudden, the scene comes together and he calls cut and everybody turns around and goes, how did he do that? In many of the scenes from Dallas Buyers Club, silence fills the background as Matthew McConaughey delivers his Oscar-winning performance as Ron Woodruff. But we do hear music in the car or in the bar scenes. In Wild, Reese Witherspoon stars as author Cheryl Strayed. Again, the focus is on natural light, some silence, some breathing, a voiceover, sounds of nature, things one might actually experience on an 1,100-mile hike. But then she meets a boy who sings her a song, again connecting emotion to music. Time. Thank you very much for asking. My mother's a singer. She's taught many songs. Oh, really? Would you like to hear one? Yeah. From this valley they say you are leaving. We shall miss your bright eyes and sweet smile. For you take with you all of the sunshine. A few years later, Valet and Witherspoon teamed up again for Big Little Lies, the HBO limited series, where he really digs deep into the love for music and there's hardly a better soundtrack out there as good as this first season. From the atmospheric opening song to Shailene Woodley's runs to the season one finale, it all just works. Again, in somewhat of a live song nature, we see Zoe Kravitz perform Don't, and then Adam Scott perform The Wonder of You. When no one else can understand me. For Sharp Objects, Amy Adams' character is more unique because she's originally not very interested in music, meaning she's not interested in her feelings. Music defines us. It helps define the, the main character, Camille Preaker. She's rock and roll. Oh, um, it's not really my thing, music. Well, no wonder you're here, girl. She's not a music person. And that's why this scene exists in the, in the rehab center. 
she becomes one of the main source of music in the series. And there's Alan listening to a classical music, crooner's music. Alan listens to a lot of music that my dad used to listen to, and that's what Amma's doing too. She just starts to sing and dance at a party where you wouldn't play this kind of music. But they're so off and stoned that it creates a moment. the same kind of approach, finding the right character in one project to become a source of music where they'll dance or sing. Music is there for that. But as much as I appreciate all of John Mark's work, the movie Demolition sticks with me the most. The movie is about a character who feels like he doesn't have emotions. In the opening scene, his wife is killed in a car crash where he's not even injured or affected. She's gone. Caught up in the turmoil, it makes him realize maybe he didn't actually love her. He definitely didn't really know her, or maybe he just stopped appreciating who she was as they grew apart. Soundtrack-wise, the first song we hear is in a flashback of their wedding day. In the first 15 minutes of the movie, Jake Gyllenhaal's character Davis is essentially waking up from his previously numb existence. First, changing up his strict daily routine then confessing his new reality to someone he essentially barely knows. I feel like I should tell you something. I'm in finance. I don't know why I told you that I worked in the mattress business. I guess I didn't expect to see you every day for five years. I don't work for the Yankees anymore. My little prick of a boss, he's 30 years younger than me. Just want to go in there and smash his little prick face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't love my wife. Well, what do you feel? I couldn't tell you why I did it. I felt like a legitimate emergency. But all this happens, and the reason why this movie is so intriguing is because he starts just to pay attention. He pays attention as a form of therapy, eventually writing things down, something his wife Julie said he never did before. When a vending machine takes his money, he writes a long-form letter explaining how he lost a buck twenty-five, but also about his current circumstances. This is the screenwriter's north star for the movie. It allows for writer Brian Sype and us, essentially, to follow Davis, watch him pursue his new curiosities, and discover who he is as a person. I'm starting to notice things I never saw before. Well, maybe I saw them. I just wasn't paying attention. This leads to a drastic realization where Davis follows his father-in-law's advice on what can only be described as demolition. Phil said it himself. If you want to fix something, you have to take everything apart and figure out what's important. What'll make you stronger? It's during this phase that his actions start to have somewhat of a ripple effect where an employee of the vending company reaches out, admits his letter affected her, and starts a new direction for the movie. Naomi Watts' character Karen realizes she too needs a change, as Davis' authenticity seems contagious. And as viewers, this is when the music starts to get louder. What song did you play? Here, the music coincides with the demolition as we first see the destroyed bathroom stall, the disassembled keyboard in his office, but also a smile creep across Davis' face for the first time. This is the only song that's in the script, which means the juxtaposition of whether it's sad or happy is from the screenwriter. In most of Valet's other works, he chooses all the music. I fight for a music budget. This is the nature of, uh, of the storytelling, putting the music in the center of uh, the story. When the two finally meet, Davis and Karen, after various phone calls and letters, doesn't seem to be a romance per se, but rather a general interest in the other person because they're both looking for something that feels lost or maybe they never had it in the first place. Karen is unhappy with her job, and probably her boss slash boyfriend. Davis just lost his wife, but he's also unsure of who he is. At the time of his wife's death, he feels like he married someone he was only meant to hook up with. And then her dad, his father-in-law, 
groomed him for a job where he wants for nothing, but also has nothing he cares about. To mirror the complexities of the characters, we also start to see conclusions before causes, like Davis's clothes, which are ruined before it's clear what he was doing. This is the same time we see Karen's son, who is listening to music and smoking cigarettes on a water tower nearby. As the story unravels, the characters seem to find the most joy when they're most present, even if the moment they're smiling about is literally destructive. Did you take apart the lighting fixture in our bathroom? Yes. I assume you're responsible for the washroom stall. That was my work, yes. Why? Well, that's a little harder to answer. Mm -hmm. Try me. Simply following these instincts to destroy or dance are childlike, more emotional than logical, which is what brings us back to the importance of music in the first place, not only in the film, but in the metaphorical soundtrack to life. John Mark Vallee allows for songs to extend beyond initial scenes in the way that music sticks with you, but it's never used to cheapen an emotion, in fact, quite the opposite. And this is why, at the midpoint, we see Davis finally show emotion. He is human after all. He did share love with his wife. He does have something to offer. What I loved about it is every time you felt like, oh, I know, I know, it, it just took you somewhere else. That's Davis Mitchell. I related to that. I related to him and to this journey. And we can shape it and do the final touch on the writing and on the arc of the character.